I think that the Guard owes it to their soldiers to afford them the opportunity to enhance their basic skills. And one of their basic skills is to read. If a soldier can't read, he's a safety hazard. If a soldier can't read, he's an operations hazard. He can't fall an op order in the infantry. Digging a foxhole and staying there for 15 days isn't all it takes to be a good infantryman. The soldier he should be afforded the opportunity to do the best he can do or she can do on SQT tests or any type of developmental programs. And if they don't have that basic skill, they're not going to go anywhere with it. The Georgia Army National Guard has recognized that to survive on today's technologically advanced battlefield, a soldier must be able to read and comprehend. Unfortunately, not all have developed the necessary skills to do that. Now, the Georgia Guard has introduced a unique literacy training program. Its goal, to provide an intensive two-week course to enhance reading and comprehension skills of soldiers testing below a 10th grade reading level. Guard Education Services Officer, Captain Laura Wickett. Well, it's a whole lot cheaper for the Guard to continue to educate these soldiers and give them their basic skills than it is to discharge them and retrain send a new soldier to basic training in AIT and to retrain him or her in everything that he, they've already ta taught an older soldier, but he's not available anymore because he didn't have a GED or he didn't have enough of the basic skills to successfully complete PLDC. Now see, if you would say OO, oh, oh, you'd say, well, that must be valve rule four because it has two vowels together. But, but valve rule six says no, it doesn't say O, oh, it says Ooh, like a moon. Most people have no idea that the English language is phonetic and that there is a, a, a system involved in, in the way our, our code has developed for writing words down and thus for spelling. And so when you show someone that there is logic to our language, that it's not an incomprehensible uh, uh, different kinds of things thrown together in a chaotic way, that there's a system that a person, once he learns that system, can use to unlock or decode words, it literally changes people. It changes them in, in their ability to live successfully. Atlanta-based reading consultant, author, and teacher, Jim Williams, developed the curriculum for the two-week course. You know, reading is probably the first task, the first intellectual task a young child is asked to master. And, it's a, uh, and if a child is not successful in school in the first few years, in, in mastering the reading process, all sorts of emotional problems develop. Problems that will, will follow a person through his entire life. And I have found, even in, in this class, working with adults, that those wounds that start in, in kindergarten or pre-kindergarten or first grade, people carry those wounds with them for their entire lives. And that's why I say this is a, I feel like I'm, I'm a healer as much as a reading teacher in that by enabling a person to, for the first time in his life perhaps, achieve success in this very basic human activity called reading, you, you enable a person to heal inside because there are all, are all sorts of emotional wounds that go with a person who has difficulty in basic reading. Now, let's go back. Give me the sound that H-U makes. Hu. Hu. Main. Main. Say the word. Humane. 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 Good. Now, look what happens. Let's, let me write it right here. Look what happens if you drop the E from the end of that word. Human. 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 But let's, let's phonetically break the word into syllables. Last year when I was teaching a basic reading program for PLDC, and at that time the people that were selected to participate in that class had not been able to successfully complete their work in the PLDC program, and after three or four days, basically flunked out and were uh, put into the, the basic reading program. And, and one soldier in particular was extremely hostile his first day. In fact, I talked to the sergeant major, uh, and he said that he came very close to uh, instigating uh, procedures against the man when he was informed he would have to take a remedial reading course. Um, the man came into the program, and the first couple of hours I gave him a lot of room because I realized he was under a lot of stress to be in there. But over a period of days, he began to really open up and talk to me and to the other people in the class. 
And he told me that reading was an, uh, a problem in his life that he had taken tremendous pains to hide from other people his entire life. He had done very well in his job. He had gone as high as he could go without, uh, with his reading skills. In fact, he was doing his best to cover his reading in uh, deficiency so that he wouldn't lose his recent promotion. And he told me, in fact, he had never even been able to admit to his wife that uh, he had a reading problem uh, because he was so sensitive about it. And I think this is one, one uh, consistent feature that I have to deal with in working with adults is that it's a very closely guarded wound and that they have, it's a very private part of themselves that they've gone to great pains to not let anyone find out about. And part of the healing process in our program here is that for the first time, these men and women can come into this room with other people and admit that I do have a problem here. And just to be able to say that to other people after hiding it for an entire life is very, very powerful. I was trying to make school, and I had my, out of my I lost my father, I was the old, oldest child, so I had to drop out of school. I couldn't wait five days and go to school five days, so I just dropped out. Specialist Archie Mincy of Swainsboro's Company A, 878th Engineer Battalion, is a student in the class. I was trying to do a lot of things coming up in the guard, and every time I wanted to go to school, and I couldn't make it because I knew I didn't have GED. And so I kept talking with our first sergeant, and he told me, to say, your slot is there. It's up to you. So I kept on trying. I just, when I was in school, I just wanted to do something to pass, to get my uh, diploma, and that's all I really wanted to do. I've always sort of like been a type person to want to do better for myself, but in this case, I just, I just didn't. You know? I was successful after I finished high school, and uh, my civilian job, you know, it calls for reading. I guess I know, I, I know my job, not that I know how to read that well, but I know the job well enough to perform, but I, I still need to know how to read better. Specialist Michael Long is communications chief with Atlanta's 190th MP Company. Well, Saturday when we arrived here, uh, people had a attitude, real negative attitude, and uh, even Sunday when we went to the class, people still had a negative attitude. Uh, but Sunday evening after the instructors, you know, talk to us and everything, uh, people lightening up. And then, uh, like, Monday, it, I think everybody in the class had a positive attitude. And people go around to each other now. We, they're making it public that, you know, this class is helping me. And it's not just I'm doing something for the guard, I'm doing something for myself. The first half a day, the first half a day, everybody was a little reluctant to say, hey, I don't want to be a part of this, I'm no dummy, you know, man, I don't need this, I'm grown, you know. Uh, 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 it, it was pride saying, you know, hey, I don't want nobody to know that I, I got a problem in reading. After getting into it, the first couple of hours, it don't take two, three days as getting into the program, the first couple of hours after getting into it, everybody relaxes and, and it, it makes sense, you know. It, what we didn't get in school begins to make sense to us now. Staff Sergeant Arthur McLean of the 878th Engineer Battalion. The guard has got to be a reading guard now. It can't be the good old boy system is out. Uh, it, it, technology has dictated that for us that we, we got to read. It's not something we want to do. It's a must. It's a must that we do that. I it will help me, you know, like PLDC school or anything to advance as far as reading because these tens and different manuals we have to read or MOS tests that we have to test maybe be words or sentences or something we cannot maybe understand don't know how to read because we don't have the basic skills. Nowadays there's nothing that we do that that it don't call for reading. You know, anything we do when we buy things, it's got to be a symbol. So we got to know how to read to put our Christmas toys together for our children. Uh, everything we do is going to be a part of this. They're learning sounds that they never knew existed before. They're learning that although there are basic sounds, 26 sounds in the, in the alphabet, and every letter has its own sound or a combination of sounds, that once they leave this class, if they choose not to continue, that's their choice. 
But as long as they continue, it takes one book and they can carry that book with them the rest of the time that they need and just keep working out of that book.